Five o'clock in the morning. Five o'clock in the morning, it was agreed that a ceasefire would take place. Kind of like Marky and Renee. And on the eleventh hour of the eleventh day of the eleventh month of nineteen eighteen, in the uh, railroad boxcar out the company, outside the company, France, the armistice was signed ending World War One. And that day was first known as Armistice Day. Later it was changed to Veteran Day. So today we set aside a time to honor all veterans, both dead and those that died, and those that are serving in the military now, those that have retired. So the message is of an old soldier whose words never faded away. An old soldier. And uh, so at this time what I want to do is I want to recognize our military people who have served. When more at them plays, I was going to let you stand, but I've got some, I've got folks in high places <laughs> that served in the military. And when they stand, unless you turn around and look up, you can't see it. So I want you to, when you hear your anthem play, I want you to come up front, stand and face the congregation. All right? Can you do that? You remember your anthem, don't you? Let's pray.
Jeremy Schwab. Met that last night. And he said he was a squid. Yeah. And I was talking to him, he was OS. I figured out, I figured out pretty he was an officer. He had to see a break with OS. Anyhow, yeah, these people that just stood up here in front of you are my heroes. I'm serious. God has got sons in the, in the Navy and the Marine Corps. Uh, well, I bet there's some, some fun times in the family there when they get together for the Army. I mean, the Navy and Marine Corps are always ribbing one another. Yeah. We tell the Marine Corps that we have to take you everywhere you want to go. I saw my name on my Marine Corps. Yeah, we're the Department of the Navy. Men's Department. Yeah, that's why I did. The Marine always looks at the Navy and said, Where are the Department of the Navy? We're the Men's Department. Then the Marine smacks him in the belly and says, They sure let y'all get fat in the Navy. But uh, as we were, the Army, the Navy, and Marines, uh, all of them will go back and forth with one another, but I want to tell you something, they make up the finest fighting force in the world.
And he's writing now in 2 Timothy to a young recruit in the army of the Lord. And he's trying to prepare this soldier for battle in the Lord's army. Now, some of you that are young soldiers in the Lord, army of the Lord today can get some great advice from those who've been around a while. Some can probably tell you about the hard times they've had in service for the Lord. But I've been every one of them. If you ask them about their service in the military, I know I've said many times, I wouldn't take anything for my journey now. I wouldn't take anything for the time I put into the Navy. I did learn an acronym. Frank Turek taught me an acronym. I don't know if there's one for the Army yet. I haven't come up with it. But I know there is an acronym for Navy. N-A-V-Y. Frank Turek said it means never again volunteer yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Never again volunteer yourself. All right? So I don't know about that, but uh, like I say, if you make up one for army, I guess. But first listen, and last it, time. Huh? First day and last time. <laughs> yeah, but I need an acronym. A R E L Y. Uh, I just thought one of them I can't figure out. Second Timothy 2. <laughs> Second Timothy 2. Stand if you will for the reading of God's word. Let's see what Paul said to this young soldier in the Lord's army. In on the Christian standard. You therefore, my child, be strong in grace that is in great Christ Jesus. And what you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, commit to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Sharing suffering as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. To please the recruiter, no one serving as a soldier gets entangled in the concerns of everyday life. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the blessing of it. Lord, thank you for the privilege. Thank you for the call that you've placed on each and every heart here today that's called you, that's accepted you as Savior. You have called them into service in your army. I pray, God, today we take this letter that Paul wrote to Timothy in which he instructs this young man, this young Christian, this young preacher on how he is to conduct himself in this spiritual warfare that he's engaging in. And I pray, Lord, we be able to apply it to our lives as well. And recognize that we are in a battle. We are in a fight. We are in your army. It is not a picnic. It is a battleground. And help us to be ready. Lord, if there's one here that's lost, save them today. And bring us, Lord, your children closer to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. I just want to go over some of the things and reiterate, stress some of the things that Paul told Timothy. The first thing he told him was be strong. He said be strong. Now, He's not talking here about physical strength, though there's no doubt the requirement for U.S. military service is you've got to have some physical strength, and they will make sure that you have some physical strength. Boot camp is not designed. Let me tell you, one of the, I think most of the veterans here have figured out boot camp is designed for one thing in purpose, and that is to break you mentally and physically. Because if they can break you mentally or physically, well, we don't need you. <laughs> okay? We just fight, fight, fight out, don't need you. And so they will do everything they can to break you mentally and physically. But Paul's not talking about here about physical strength, and he's not talking about academic strength as far as being smart. To move up in the ranks of the military, you have to be educated. I've got some friends that retired as officers in, in the Navy, high-ranking officers, and they're very intelligent. But Paul's not talking about here about being strong and intelligent. Paul's talking about here being strong. He says in what? Strong in grace in Jesus Christ. We sing about amazing grace, how great it is, and how amazing it is. It's his unmerited favor. And he said, be strong in the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. That means accepting his grace and showing his grace to others. Now, some of us are strong in accepting his grace, but we don't want to show grace to others. Amen. <laughs> no, no, don't want to show grace to others. You messed up. All right? You won't have to pay the price. That's what that uh, whole thing was about at the uh, judgment house last night. Was not being graceful, not forgiving. Listen to it. Grace is the unmerited favor of God. And we sing about it. Grace, his unmerited favor, is through every battle that we face. It's his grace that brings us. Through every trial that comes along, it's his grace that brings us. Grace that brings us. Through every temptation that we face, it's his grace that brings us forth through it. And so Paul said, be strong in the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and endure these hardships. Listen, just like every Christian soldier, Christian, every soldier needs the backing and the support of the U.S. government, then we as Christian soldiers fighting in the army of the Lord, we have the backing of God who created the universe. Let me tell you something. If the God who created the universe is backing you, 
How can you fail? Yeah. You cannot fail if God is backing you. And if you're stepping in his will, walking in his will, sharing his grace to others, listen, you will be victorious in whatever circumstances you face. I don't care what it is. I don't care whether it's sickness. I don't care whether it's lost job. I don't care whether it's lost income. I don't care whether it's the bank that forecloses on you. God will bring you through it. If you practice his grace, listen, God's grace comes from no other source. It's got to come from God. It doesn't come from the power of positive thinking. You can think as positive as you want to. But it won't, get you, it won't get the job done unless God is behind it. It's got to come from God. I heard, a man the other, heard about a man the other day. Thought, he said, I got the strength. God said, hey, listen to me. If Peter can walk on water, I can walk on water. So he started walking across the swimming pool. Guess how far he got? Because <laughs> God didn't get him to walk on water. <laughs> and that's the difference. Positive thinking won't do it for you. Have Krishna, Buddha, Allah, they won't do it for you. They'll all let you down. Only in Jesus Christ is that grace. So many in this world search for strength and within themselves, you will never find the strength within yourself. It must come from Almighty God. I can't, ever, I can't stress that enough. Too many times we're trying to do things in our own strength in this battle that we're fighting. And it is a spiritual battlefield. And we're trying to overcome it by our own strengths. You cannot overcome it by your own strength. You're going to fail. But if you put your trust and faith in God, and by His grace, yeah, you can have victory. Over whatever grace, whatever you face. Yeah. Then he told him something else. He said, not only be strong, he said, commit. Now, some people are committed, others need to be. You can take that any way you want to. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> what does it mean to commit? It means to give over something to another for care, protection, or performance. To give something over to someone else. It's to give as a trust to someone. And after reading these definitions, all I can say commit means to pass it on, brother. Just pass it on. That's what Paul said to Timothy. I want you to commit that what I've committed to you, I want you to pass it on to other, others. Listen, when you read through 1st and 2nd Timothy, you'll see all of the advice, the information, the teachings. But the most important thing you'll see is the love that Paul had for Timothy. And he thought of Timothy like a son. He probably longed for the day when he could just sit down and talk with Timothy, person to person. Matter of fact, they're probably having a conversation on the streets of glory right now. Can't you see that? a beautiful picture. Paul and Timothy sit there and uh, Timothy said, Paul, I appreciate all the, all the advice you gave me, all the good information and how to, how to follow God. And, and Paul said, well, I knew you could do it because God was going in power. I mean, can you just imagine the conversation those two are having? Wouldn't you like to just, uh, well, you can't get a fly on the wall in heaven because they're going to say, can't be fly. But <laughs> so wouldn't you like to just be able to listen in on that conversation for just a few minutes and share the glories of God that they're sharing with each other? Here in the short time Paul had left on this earth, he wanted to commit to Timothy things that he had learned and that he wanted Timothy to pass on. Uh, Joy's mom and dad, we talked about them last night, they're both in heaven now. They were old time veterans in the army of the Lord. And lately I've been thinking about some of the things that they taught me, some of the things that they passed down to me, some of the things that I shared with you, the things that Joy's mom and I sat around in the, uh, sat around the kitchen table or in the living room opening the Bible and sharing, and she shared some things with me, and I'd ask her some questions, and, oh, what a blessing that. Honey, I'd love to do that again, wouldn't you? Aye, man, that was a blessing. And Joy's dad, he taught me some things. He taught me about uh, about doing right, doing right. I won't never forget. We got married. He called us into the room after Joy and I, and we had all the vows and the ceremony and all that good stuff, and he called us into the room. We were going to Charleston, South Carolina, because I was in the Navy. And he looked at me, and he looked at Joy, and he said something to Joy that just made him feel so relieved. He looked at her, and he pointed to his finger. And he said, now, honey, let me tell you something. This is your husband. You're going to Charleston, South Carolina. If you come back home, I'll put you on the next bus back to Charleston. <laughs> Made me feel good. Then he turned around to me and said, Unless she's got bruises on her, and she does, I'll do it next time. I said, Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. I got that. Remember that, honey? That, 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 that stuck with me. And I thought, Yeah, that's right. That's the way a father takes care of his daughter. Amen? Amen. Yeah, so, listen, they passed down some things to me. And other great heroes of faith. I went across the sanctuary 
and then I see some great heroes of faith in here. I was talking to Pat this morning. Pat's still here. She had to leave. She had to leave. I was talking to her this morning. That woman didn't have around the Baptist church longer than I had. Talk about a faithful guy. And, and I can name names, but I don't want to start naming names because I'll leave somebody out. And I don't want to leave names around anybody out. But, but you pass things on that have been passed down to me. This room is full of veterans, great soldiers of the cross. Great men and women of God who passed on their knowledge and scriptures. And then you got some great saints and soldiers in the army of the Lord that have passed on. They're not here anymore. They're testimonies. Great things they have. Men like Brother Pete Bennett, Bob Perry, Ellen Honeycutt, Joyce Whitney. Well, actually, I don't want to leave anybody out, but I mean, they taught things. Huh? <coughs> Chairman, yes. Uh, great people that taught things. Taught you things. Passed them on. Commit. That's what Paul meant by commit. Pass on what you've learned to others. That's why we're starting the inductive Bible study, Billy. So we can pass on the Word of God to others and teach others to pass it on to them. Now, I'm 70 years old. I know. But back 200 years ago, a 50 year old man was considered to be fairly old. Today, he's a middle aged man. I, got, I could have a lot of years left. I don't know. I do know I'm getting the best service, medical service right now I've ever gotten from the VA. Uh, you can say what you want to do about it. They've been doing me good. They're doing all kinds of tests and things. I asked them, that's what y'all doing it for? He said, just so we keep you living longer. I said, yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I like you. Uh, but only God knows how long I got. But I want to tell you something. The things that I have learned these past 70 years, I want to pass them on. I, I, I'm certainly not the smartest. I'm certainly not the strongest. And I want to do my best to commit those things that I have learned to others. Pass it on. So he told him. He said, be strong. He said, commit. And then he told him something else in his passage. Before. He said, endure. Share in the suffering as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. King James says that thou, thou therefore in your hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Nobody said it'd be easy. As I said, I remember in my time in the Navy, it's something I wouldn't take a million dollars not to have done. But if I'd known now I, now I would go back through it again. But if you asked me when I got out, would you go back through it again? Uh-uh. <laughs> no, I'm not ready for that yet. But now I realize more than enough, I realize what it taught me. What it taught me more than anything else was discipline. 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 Even when it doesn't make sense, discipline. <laughs> uh, have you ever buried a sand three six by six? Yeah, very, very a sand tree. I, I, I want to share this. It's in a week. I think I showed it to you before. I didn't realize my DI, my DI was a drill instructor in the Navy. And uh, uh, I didn't realize this, but he had sent, because I saw the movie years after I got out of service. I saw this in the movie. So I know this is where he got it from. But we were standing out on the grinder one day. The grinder is the marching facility. We were marching around. <coughs> Practice all your routines, you know, like that, that kind of stuff. And we were standing in detention on a grinder in, uh, in uh, Florida. And all of a sudden, you heard swearing. That DI hit the I can't use the language he used, I won't do it. <laughs> but he hit the roof. What was that? Did somebody just kill one of my sand fleas? That sand flea is U.S. government property. It's on U.S. government reservation. This is a military base. Everything on here is government issue. That sand flea is government issue. Oh, that sand flea found him. We're going to give him a burial with proper military honors. <laughs> you can imagine what some of the other sailors said. So we looked around and we looked around. He had us down on our hands and knees digging for that sand flea that that guy had killed. After a while, somebody got smart, found a sand flea and smushed it. <laughs> Brought it to him and said, here it is, sir. And he said, was that sand flea you killed male or female? The guy said, male, sir. He said, this is female. That ain't the one. <laughs> so help me. What I'm telling you is what? We looked around for four hours. We were on our hands and knees. Finally, he let somebody get by with bringing him a sand flea that turned out to be the right sand flea. We dug a hole six foot deep, six foot wide, six foot long. We put that sand flea in the bottom of that hole. We then filled it back up. We then stood in the kitchen. 
while the band came out and played, or while the drummer came out and played catch. And we gave it a full military service funeral. I was so mad. But you see, I ain't been there long enough to know not to say anything. So I, Now, I thought to myself, here's what, here's what I want you to see. This is book count. Here's what I want you to see. I thought to myself, in the name of God, they ain't going to, that makes me so mad, but I'm going to stay around here and I'm going to get even with them. I'm going to get them back one way or the other. That be out of mine. But you see, that's what they exactly wanted them to do. They wanted them to get angry enough, to get feisty enough, to be strong enough. To battle through. If I'd have said, I ain't doing this before I quit, they'd said, Go ahead. After a while, go on home, we don't need you. That's what I'm trying to tell you. They tried to it it takes an effort to take the littlest things and break you if they can. Because if they break you daily, they don't want it, right? Right. <laughs> they don't want you if you can be broken. But having said all that, Paul, old Timothy, endure. Into your hardship. Now, military life can be hard. That was, see, in boot camp, you don't have any combat situations, so they got to take little stuff and make a big mountain molehill out of it. A big mountain out of it, a little molehill. But in the, in the military itself, it gets rough. Some veterans spent days without food and water. Some veterans, were, they faced hand to hand combat. Some were captured and tortured. But through it all, they endured, they overcame, they won, and they were victorious. We as soldiers of the cross have to endure hardships of all kinds, just as many have in the past. All of the of all the disciples, John was the only one to die a natural death. And he still faced persecution on the Isle of Patmos, as he wrote Revelation. Missionaries, even today, face great hardship, great hardships on the mission field. Think about it. Does anybody know who Joe Scribbin is? Joe Scribbin. Name not for me if you will. He faced hardships. He was a missionary from Ireland to Canada. He was working among the Iroquois Indians. And he was joined by his fiance, who was also from Ireland. And just before the wedding, matter of fact, the day before the wedding, she was killed in an ice accident. Joe buried her with his own hands in a broken heart. And one year later, in a letter to his mother, he wrote this. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and grief to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Now you know who Joe Scribbins is? He's on the road to triumph, even though there were times when that road was rough. And then Paul told Timothy something else. He said, be strong, commit, endure, and also said, stay focused. Christian, Christian soldier in the Lord's army, this I think is one of the most important things that you will ever hear. Stay focused. Not serving as a soldier gets in, no one serving as a soldier gets entangled in the concerns of life. Stay focused. Don't let anything distract you. And it's so easy to get distracted. We'll get distracted with one another. Amen. Yeah, I thought she had been talking to me this morning. Oh, that preacher didn't even check my hand. That's the focus at. Is that the funny? Is the reason you came this morning for me to shake your hand? Please let me know. I'll shake your hand all the way up. Because right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to miss anybody. But I hope that ain't why you came. I hope you came to worship the Lord. Stay focused. Focus on Him. Isn't it amazing how we, how, how we get upset about little things that happen in our life? I'm talking about little things. This is, we make mountains out of them and all out of proportion. And in the grand scheme of things, they ain't worth a hill of beans. Say amen. amen. What that person did to you that made you so mad that you can't forgive them, what, what are you going to do when you get to heaven and their, 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 their mansion's right next door to yours? Burn down. <laughs> <laughs> you won't ever get there. <laughs> so God's going to change all that. I'm serious. I mean, what difference is going to make when you get to heaven? So why in the name of my Lord and Savior did you let it bother you so much down here? Forget about it. Move on. Amen? Amen. It ain't going to make it. ain't going to rock anything when you get to heaven. I get so upset all these little things that one church has against another 
the church because they don't do this and by the way at the first church last night they gave an invitation and I asked Joy Tracy and Donald riding with us I asked Joy on the way home I said did you hear that invitation she said yeah I said what did you think about it she said well I don't know I said he did two things he asked for people to come forward and get saved and then he asked for those that had been saved and turned away to rededicate their life. If you keep in mind something here, this is a Pentecostal home of the church. That is an invitation of the brother's spirit. I was shocked, impressed, and pleased. Just that's it, that didn't cost me a dime. And that just stuck out of my mind. That's the first thing I thought of. Good. That's scripture. That's good. Man, stay focused. I what Paul told the church at Philippi. Philippians 3, verse 14. He said, I pursued my goal, the prize promised by God's heavenly call in Christ Jesus. Therefore, all who are mature, don't you listen to this now. Listen carefully. Therefore, all who are mature should think this way. And if you think differently about anything, God will reveal this also to you. In any case, we should live up to whatever truth we have attained. Now keep in mind, in any case, in any case, in the transitional here, it means because of what I've just told you, in any case, we should live up to whatever truth we have attained. Join in imitating me, brothers and sisters, and observe those who live according to the example you have in us. Verse 14 is a very familiar passage of scripture. Paul just says that he's pre- he said, I'm pressing towards the mark and prize of the high call of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And he keeps his eye on the goal. He doesn't get things around him distracted. That's a great verse, but I want you to look at verse 15. There he says we need to be mature in the same way. Stay focused. Don't get distracted. Verse 16, he says we need to walk by the same rules as he does. Imagine Paul saying, walk like me. Would you be willing to tell somebody, walk like me? That's a heavy statement, isn't it? Paul said, walk like I do. Verse 17, he says, if you see someone with the same idea as him, then let him along with Paul be an example. Follow those. Stay focused. I believe that's got to be one of the best pieces of advice that Paul gave to Timothy here. Just as a soldier and the Lord and the Army of the United States of America must be on guard against those things that will distract him. How many of you have had to walk guard duty? Boring, isn't it? Easy to get distracted, isn't it? Dangerous if you do, isn't it? Could be fatal the right person to try to tell you. The devil uh, and the Lord's army will try to distract you from doing your job, your duty, and we as Christians got to be on guard constantly against those things that come up to distract us. Our enemy, the devil, is a master at bringing up things in our life to get our eyes off the goal. Chapter 4 of this same book, Paul is alone in prison getting ready to be executed. I want you to think his greatest need in this time and he's only got Luke there with him. Verse 10 is one of the saddest verses in the Bible. He's getting ready to think about him now. He's hungry. He's cold. He's preparing for death. And this is what he says. The demon has deserted me because he loved this present world and has gone to Christ tonight. Paul says not to let the things of this world entangle you. Stay focused. That's why in the military, an officer, and I'll fraternize with enlisted personnel. Do you understand? You know why? Because if you have an officer in charge and an enlisted person under him that they are romantically involved with, there might be some favoritism when it comes to signing. And especially when it came to be having a duty assignment. Paul said, don't entangle yourself with anything or anyone. Stay focused. And then finally he says, the goal. He says to please the commander. Look at the last part of verse 4. He seeks to please the recruiter. Another version of King James says that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. He may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. There's several men and women here today. How many of you can remember this? I run once to Solomon Square. And I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. 
And I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, and I will obey the orders of the President of the United States and the orders of the officer appointed under me according to the regulation and the uniform code of military justice. So help me God. I may not remember that. Let me tell you something, gentlemen. That, if you, that you took an oath that has, ne oath has never been revoked. Are you listening to me? Just because you are out of service does not mean that oath has been revoked. And it says to defend the United States of America against all enemies, foreign and domestic. <clears throat> I could preach a message right there. Are you too political? There's only one supreme commander of all the branches of the United States military, and it is the President of the United States. He's in charge of all of them. Every single soldier from the highest ranking enlisted man to the highest ranking officer has sworn an oath to obey his orders. And man, at times, that has to be hard. But it's part of being in the military of the United States of America. The discharge officer told me as I was leaving the Navy, he said, you're leaving the greatest fighting force ever known to man. Folks, that's our military. That's the United States of America military chief. Pretty soon, we're going to vote in another year. We're going to vote again for Supreme Commander. And it's no doubt one of the most important elections of our time. And one of the reasons among many, in fact, the president is in charge of our military, so we need to have the right commander in there. I urge all of you to take the time to pray and vote accordingly. As Paul, as, as, you, as God directs you in your conscience and from the Holy Spirit. Paul told Timothy, press towards the goal. And Paul told Timothy these four things. He said, be strong in the grace of, the, uh, of the Jesus Christ. Number two, commit the gospel to others. Number three, endure hardness. Four, stay focused. Why? Why do you do these things? So that you can please him who has chosen you to be a soldier. Who chose you to be a soldier of the Lord's army? God himself chose you. And it's through the shed blood of Jesus Christ that you enlisted. When you... <laughs> you say, well, I don't want to be in the army. Listen, I know some people... Gary, I'm sure you did too. Billy, I'm sure you've heard it. Uh, and Bill, you've heard When we got the boot camp, you've heard some people say, man, I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> huh? They wouldn't think, they, oh, no, what did I do? I changed my mind. Mama. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah and, and the thing I use that gets in your face and says, I'm going to go. Yeah, I, I, I can tell you this. I'll go there. <laughs> you say, I'm going to be your mother, I'm going to be your daddy, I'm going to be your brother, I'm going to be your sister, I'm going to be your lover, whatever you need, I'm going to be it. Do you understand me? Sir, yes, sir. <laughs> That's where it stops at. Well, no, it don't stop. That's where it gets started at. Amen? <laughs> That's where it gets started at. But I'm sure that everybody that's ever been in military service at some point in boot camp said, man, I'm going out of here. But you know what? You took an oath, and you made a commitment, and the United States government will remind you very quickly about that oath and commitment. When you enlisted in the Lord's army, you accepted, listen to me, you accepted the sacrificial blood of Jesus from sin, cleansing you white as snow, and you cannot retract that. So before things get tough and going to get rough, <laughs> you've got to stay in there because you are in the army of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Don't even think about quitting. And if you do, <laughs> i got news for you. You think that the eyes to the way of God says, son, let me tell you something. Let me tell you about the commitment you made. Somebody say amen. amen. You ever had to be reminded? Sure, you have. All of us have been had to be reminded time to time. I don't know about you, but I'm having fun with this message this morning. I'll close with these two illustrations. During World War II, uh, during the Civil War, first of all, let me that Abraham Lincoln was commander-in-chief of the Union forces. And it was a great burden knowing that his order may put somebody in jeopardy. And so one morning he met with a group of ministers from, from prayer breakfast, and different ministers spoke about the different needs that they got to pray for. And one of them said, Mr. President, let us pray that God is on our side. Abraham Lincoln said, no, let us pray when we're on God's side. <laughs> Amen? All the way around. In 1951, an old American <clears throat> soldier, General Douglas MacArthur, gave a speech, joint speech, uh, uh, session of joint Congress, and he closed the speech by saying, old soldiers never die, they just fade away. 
And I thought about this old man who first told me in the Lord God, the Apostle Paul. There in Roman cell, he did die. But 2,000 years later, his words have not faded away. They're still real. They're just as powerful today as they were then. He said, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I've kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them that love his appearance. I'll close with this chapter. If you're saved, born again, child of God, you're in the Lord's army. You are a soldier. And some of you are veterans. You've been in there for a while. But are you fighting the fight? Are you doing these four things? Are you staying strong in grace? Are you enduring? Are you committed? Are you staying focused? Or in all honesty, let me ask you this. Have you lost your focus? Is there times that you've been distracted by things around you that upset you and got you out of sorts? Everybody gets out of sorts from time to time. Nothing wrong with that. The problem is staying out of sorts. Amen. Are you staying focused? Are you staying committed? Maybe this morning, you're a child of God, you need to come to the Lord and me. Lord, help me to keep these qualities of good and recognize, Lord, that I am not at a picnic. I am in a battle. And it is an intense spiritual battle raging for me and my family and my loved ones and my friends. God, help me stay prepared to be stronger. Are you strong in the grace that's found in Jesus? Are you committing the gospel to others? Are you enduring hardness or are you in a retreat mode? Some, men, some soldiers today in the Lord's army are retreating. Are you staying focused on what's really important? Are you answering the call of the Lord Jesus Christ? In other words, who's shy? Are you a head to my eyes?